so we are picking up with document C here, which is a um, document written by a monk um, talking about his journey to Chartres, where he's going to go try and study with another monk. The passage below is an excerpt from a history of France written by a monk named Richard in the late 900s. In this passage, Richard describes how he went to the town of Chartres in what is today in France to study. The passage illustrates medieval education, which was provided primarily at monasteries or church schools and was not available to most people. So it's important to kind of keep in mind here our understanding of the Middle Ages, that this was a time period in which most schools were occurring out of monasteries, which was required by Charlemagne, the Holy Roman Emperor. And so it's not available to most people because it's only available to people who could potentially afford it. Okay, so this is his um, primary source written by him that's talking about his journey to kind of expand his education. While engaged in the study of liberal arts, I wanted very much to learn logic through the work of Hippocrates. So first of all, liberal arts is kind of the study of all things, right? So if you're at a liberal arts um, uh, school, you're going to study math, you're going to study art, you're going to study history, you're going to study English. So you're really studying all the different topics. Um, Hippocrates, if we remember, is a Greek philosopher, but specifically he was well learned on medicine. And so what I can understand from this document is that the monk Richard was really trying to study medicine. One day, a horseman, or a messenger, from Chartres came to Reims, and we began to talk. He told me that Herebrand, a clerk of Chartres, has sent him here to bring a message to a monk named Richard. I told the messenger that I was Richard. He gave me the letter, which I opened with some excitement. This was it, an invitation from Herebrand to come to Chartres and study with him. So essentially, this monk got what he wanted, which was to um, travel um, to Chartres, who is a person, and to learn with him. Then I diligently began the study of aphorisms with Hippocrates with Herebrand. I don't know what an aphor aphorism is. I can only I can only um, guess that it has to do with um, medicine. It says here, it's a pithy observation that contains general truth. So when we say he's studying aphorisms, what we essentially come to understand here is that he is studying the truth of medicine with, Hippo um, with Hippocrates. So the truth about medicine or things that we need to be known about medicine with Herebrand, a highly cultured and scholarly man. I learned the ordinary symptoms of diseases and picked up surface knowledge of ailments. So he's obviously receiving a generalized education here about medicine and about diseases. This was not enough to satisfy my desires. I begged him to continue to guide my studies on a deeper level, for he was an expert in his art and pharmaceutics, which we know to be pharmaceuticals, aka medicine, botany, and surgery. So these are all three uh, more intensive topics in um, medicine. So he essentially is trying to take his understanding of medicine deeper from just a surface knowledge to really becoming an expert in both medicine and the use of plants as medicine. That's what botany is and surgery. So really doing those kind of um, higher level um, ideas here. So document D and E are kind of put together. Document D really shows the rise of universities during the Middle Ages. So beginning in the early 11th century, universities were founded throughout Europe. Below is a list of the 10 oldest European universities in Europe. Attendance excuse me, at these universities was limited to a small percentage of the population. However, universities introduced a new system of education, eventually replacing the monastery and church schools. So this kind of helps us to understand that universities started during the Middle Ages, but they did extend into, excuse me, into the um, Renaissance, that this, the, the rise of universities in the late Middle Ages, because that's what we're kind of looking at here, the 10 hundreds to 12 hundreds, really led into the understanding um, necessary for the Renaissance. So the fact that they had 10 different universities established during this time throughout Europe, specifically in Italy and Spain and France, and the UK kind of shows us here that these universities kind of had a rise in popularity and that the learning that was occurring during the Middle Ages would eventually lead to the Renaissance and that time of education. So this really goes against that idea that the Dark Ages were dark. 
The last document we have to look at here is actually a series of pictures. So looking at Gothic cathedrals, specifically Notre Dame. Cathedral Notre Dame de Paris, or Our Lady of Paris Cathedral, is one of the most famous Gothic cathedrals in Europe. The Gothic style of architecture was common in the late Middle Ages. Common features of Gothic cathedrals included architectural innovations, including large columns, high ceilings with ribbed vaults, fine buttresses, and a large stained glass window. So for example, on this um, picture here, which is the view of Notre Dame from the river. The river kind of runs right through here. You can see some of those things here. So you have the archways, um, you see arches here. The flying buttresses is this um, particular kind of support to the building. You can see the high ceilings, right? So this is a tall building. Um, you also see columns kind of being used. There's one here and these other types of um, innovations. If we look at this picture here, we can also see those archways. So you have the arches in the windows, the arches around the doors. You have um, some of this this Middle Ages art here. You can see these kind of religious figures um, kind of on the outside of that cathedral. Okay. And the last here is the stained glass. So this is a stained glass window that shows up um, on right here. So this is actually this window here. Um, and you can see how intricate the stained glass actually is. Um, you can't see it from far away, but inside of each of these, there's um, kind of Bible scenes. It is a very, very large window um, and is considered one of the greatest architectural achievements. Gothic cathedrals were usually the largest and tallest buildings in a city because they were the churches. The churches were made to have, be the tallest building in a city so that they could be easily found. Um, Notre Dame is 420 feet long, 226 feet wide, and its two towers are 226 feet high. Construction on the cathedral began in 1163 and was completed, completed in 1345. So again, we can kind of see here that there are major innovations occurring in architecture and in buildings specifically. Um, so we do know that based on uh, this particular cathedral, that there were innovations happening, which would show that the Dark Ages were maybe not as dark as we thought it was. Um, so this is an important kind of thing to keep in mind as we're writing our paragraph. So once you have finished all the documents, you'll come down to the ACES plus C writing pr practice, and you'll answer the question, were the Dark Ages really dark? I have defined that for you. Um, remember, we're answering the questions. We're using that definition that was established at the beginning of the document activity of dark versus light. Then you're going to cite two pieces of evidence from the documents to support whether they were or were not dark. Explain how that shows that. Again, going back to that definition in the introduction there and then restating your thesis. We've done this a couple of times here, so this should be um, old hat to you. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for um, watching this video.